Hi. In this Easter Boot video, I'm going to show you how you can boot to different UEFI images. These images are actually um, images of a whole partition which can be made from an ISO or from a zip file or from an existing USB drive or even a folder on your hard disk as long as the source contains the correct payload files which will allow you to boot to UEFI. First of all, I'll demonstrate how easy to boot handles these the partition images. And then I'll show you how I made them. So to start with, I'm running VirtualBox and I've booted from an easy to boot USB hard disk. It's actually an 80 gigabyte hard disk. And you can see here the menu options. So the first thing I've got in the menu is Clonezilla. The next uh, partition image I've got is uh, Fedora or Fedora Live Desktop x86 64 bit 20 1. And the um, next one I've got is um, Windows 8 Retail. So let's start with the Clonezilla image partition, which you can see here. So when you first boot to an easy to boot USB drive and you see this menu, which is the main menu, um, you'll get these image PTN image partition uh, files listed. So whatever, whatever image PTN file you drop, in this case into the ISO main menu folder, um, you'll see listed in the main menu when you boot. So let's run this clone to the live image partition and see what happens. So first of all, I'll press enter. And you can see here that when we've selected this partition image, um, it gives us some information. Uh, we've got, it says, x86 32-bit UEFI boot file is present, and also an x86 64-bit UEFI, UEFI, 64-bit UEFI boot file. So we can boot to both 32-bit and 64-bit UEFI systems. Um, what this is going to do is replace the whole partition table in the master boot record of the USB drive with a new partition table which contains only the uh, partition table for this image. So we just say yes and it's told us it's now swapped it over and it now has now booted to the new partition. So if you look at this screen you can see that at the bottom there it, it again lists the UEFI um, boot files that are present in this image and you can see from the two listed at the bottom that um, it can boot to a 32-bit or 64-bit UEFI system. Uh, on the menu here we've got uh, option 0 which is boot, uh, switch back to the easy to boot menu so this will replace the partition table with the original easy to boot partition table and we'll get back our easy to boot main menu again and we can access all the files in easy to boot as usual. Um, option 1 is the boot from this drive in MBR mode. So you see the, the menu is actually called CSM menu because it's the compatibility support module uh, mode of uh, UEFI booting which mimics um, the MBR booting that you get on a normal old type of BIOS system. Uh, sometimes there's an alternate menu um, which, will, uh, which you can use if the first menu doesn't work. So these two menu options are for normal non-UEFI booting. The third option here is boot from the internal hard disk. So if you've got an internal hard disk, this will boot in MBR mode to the internal hard disk. Um, and then the fourth option is reboot. So it'll, it'll reboot back and boot from this drive. So I'll just choose reboot just to show you what happens when you plug in, if you plugged in this drive now into another system, and booted to this USB drive. So again, we're running VirtualBox, but it'll it's just like this in a real system, and it'll just boot back to this menu again. So let's just choose the first option here, which is to boot from this drive, but in MBR mode. So this would be just like booting in Easy to Boot from the ISO file, and it gives us the Clonezilla menu. And if we select one of those options then uh, it'll load up Clonezilla. So I'll just I'll pause the video now and um, show it to you when it's fully booted. OK, well I won't go any further. So let's just uh, reset the system and 
go back to the CSN menu again. So, okay, so we can boot to in MBR mode to the Clonezilla ISO, but we could do that. We could do that from the ISO anyway in easy to boot. What we want to have is UEFI booting. So let's shut down the virtual machine and use a new virtual machine which supports UEFI booting. So you can see here I've set up the virtual machine USB boot utility um, by David B. If you look in tutorial 4 on my RM Prep USB website, uh, you'll get details of how to use this really useful utility. I'll select um, EFI 64 bit booting and just make sure that the drive, my 80 gigabyte drive, is USB drive is set up there as the drive I want to boot from. You have to do this um, each time because when you swap partitions it also changes the disk serial number uh, and so um, the utility, rather VirtualBox, won't like it if you change the disk number without setting up a new um, virtual machine a VMDK file for it, which is what this utility does. So let's run this now, let's boot from this as we would do from a, a UEFI, UEFI system. And you can see immediately it boots up to the, I can't get the whole menu on, but it, it boots up to uh, the Clonezilla menu. It's a different menu because it's UEFI booting. Um, and if I choose one of these options, it should boot, uh, carry on booting in UEFI mode to Clonezilla. I'll bring up the uh, folder. So these are my drives and you can see um, that this drive here, it's got that E2B um, logo here um, and it tells you the name of the, pay the payload is actually in the title here. So if I uh, click into this and I'll expand this a bit. So um, you can see this is actually the um, partition uh, of our USB drive. So I'll cancel that and you can see there's our drive here. So whatever we boot this drive to now, our easy to boot USB drive, now it's in this uh, CSM mode as I call it. Um, you can see here it's it's got a total size is 162 megabytes of files with uh, 26 megabytes free because the partition has been made to that size. Uh, so whenever, whenever we boot this drive now in uh, UEFI mode, it will it will boot to Clonezilla. Uh, if we boot to this drive in MBR mode, it will boot to the CSM menu. So let's just boot to the CSM menu again. So I'll select uh, CSM boot. So again, we need to just edit this to make sure that it's got the right drive in it and we'll boot it up to CSM mode. Okay, so we need to change this back now into easy to boot mode, so you just simply choose option zero, switch to easy to boot mode, and because we've booted in MBR mode, it can change the menus over. So now what it's done is restored the original MBR with the original partition table of easy to boot, and we can now access our normal easy to boot menu and boot from anything you, you've you already got in easy to boot like um, your Windows install files or XP install, um, your live CDs etc. So in the next part of the video I'll describe how I made these image PTN partition image files um, and how I added them to the easy to boot USB drive. So here are my three files. I've got um, the a Windows 8 64-bit ISO, which happens to be the 8.1 retail version. Got the Fedora ISO here. And I've also got here the Clonezilla download, which is the zip file. So Clonezilla actually provides um, a USB uh, payload file rather than an ISO file. You can get the ISO file for burning to CD or DVD but uh, you can also download a zip file which is specifically for USB drives and that's the one that you want in this case uh, because essentially you're booting it from a, a, 
a, a USB drive as a as a flat file structure, not as an ISO in this case. Um, so how do I convert these to uh, image PTN files? Well, I do it using uh, Make Part Image, which you can download from the Easy to Boot website. So you can see here I've downloaded the MPI toolkit, which includes Make Part Image. And in the Make Part Image folder, you'll see there's a Make Part Image.cmd file. There's also a couple of other um, CMD files, script files. One is Auto Run NTFS, and one is Auto Run FAT32. And there's also a README, which I strongly advise you to read, which will tell you how to use this Make Part Image script. So you can run this from an administrator command line shell and if you just run it on its own without any arguments uh, it will give you this usage message and it will um, prompt you to enter in the source file and there are some examples here of the command lines that you can use. It uh, looks rather complicated but if you set up a shortcut um, it makes things a lot easier. Again if you read the readme instructions it'll tell you how to make a shortcut. So what I've done here is made up a, a shortcut for the make part image uh, fat32 auto command file. If I click on properties um, and if you look in here it'll show you how, what the target command line is to set this up and again this is in the readme file. So to convert for instance the Fedora Live desktop ISO into an image PTN file um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just delete the original file just to show you Okay, so just drag and drop that onto this file. You'll get a um, administrator warning because you must run this. The, set, the shortcut must be set up to run as administrator, and then the uh, command shell will launch. It will automatically convert the ISO over, and it may prompt you a little bit during the conversion if it needs to make some choices but uh, for the most part it should be automatic. And there we are, it's done it. And there's our image PTN file. Okay, so once you've made your .image PTN file, um, go to the ISO main menu, in this case I'm using the main menu folder, and just simply copy the file into the uh, folder. Um, if you want to, you can use, um, there's an ISO uh, wind folder, you could copy the files into there if you like, or if you want to, you put them in any way you like, utilities or docs or backup, or you put them even in Linux, they'll still work. Just uh, don't put, well, you can put them in auto if you want to, um, that will work as well. Uh, but don't put it in Windows. Windows, the Windows folder is for Windows installer ISOs only, not for um, any other sort of file.